Hi, my name is Selena from Sexual Branch, and this is my vlog for C2, Terra, Unifor, Lesson 2. So, on music education. Okay, so for this week's project, students are expected to develop a plan to support music education in their schools, and they're given three choices one, a protest, two, to contact companies to donate to their music program, and three, to plan a fundraiser for raising money and of course students have the choice of coming up with their own ideas but from what I can foresee most of the students will probably choose to do the fundraiser one just because they can get a little bit more creative. Uh, that being said since most Terra students won't be familiar with terms like protest, fundraisers, and donations, it'll be really important to give them clear-cut examples of each of them. For protests, they have a nice media card, so it'll be nice to show that one. Uh, for the contacting local companies to donate, we can give them examples of posters that have lists of sponsors at the bottom, and they probably will understand that very quickly. And for the fundraisers, um, a nice example would be a concert, say, to raise funds for Hurricane Katrina victims or other natural disasters. Okay, so moving on to the ID8 portion, for step one, the first step one, where it says as a group students should talk about why schools decide to cut budgets for the music program, I think this is better done as a class rather than in the small groups because for the sake of saving more time for the actual materialized part later. So just talk with the students as a class about why music funding would be cut and then move on to the next step of the idea which goes back to step one again and let them start brainstorming for their actual project. I think just this is more time efficient. Uh, so make sure the students are brainstorming properly and encourage them to write down their brainstorm session and to answer all the questions or try to answer all of the questions that the list gives. Just because it'll probably focus them better when they're moving on to the materialized part and making the slides. So I'll just have more content and more things to divide up among the group. Uh, for the promotional design, it's probably pretty straightforward and students will probably enjoy this part the most. Uh, I find that a lot of Terra students are very creative and they love making posters and other designs. So I'm sure students will be able to have fun with this. Uh, let them use Google Images and not Neighbor, just because I find that students, when they use Neighbor, they search in Korean, and of course, since this is English class, it'd be best to let them search in English. For the actual materialized part, then, make sure students have a lot of time for this one. Make sure they're aware of the time limit. So uh, the apps that will be used for this part will be Polaris Office for the PowerPoint, and Sketchbook Express maybe for uh, creating the poster or other promotional flyers or materials and also S-Node. Uh, S-Node is actually nice when if students have things they want to put in text because they can write it or type it and then convert it into PDF file which turns out very nicely. And Polaris Office, uh, surprisingly a lot of students know how to work with this and make PowerPoints. So make sure that they use it to their advantage in this portion. Also, uh, students should use Google Images rather than Naver to search images just because if they do Naver, they tend to search the terms up in Korean and it'll be pretty important for them to learn the skills needed to search using English. So make sure they're using the media library or Google Images. Also, it's going to be crucial to divide up the work among the group. If there's, say, four students in a group, which usually is the standard in my classes, for example, two students work on the poster while two students work on Polaris Office on the PowerPoint slides. Uh, or they can even do it at like one person searches images on Google Images while other people work on the slides and one person works on the poster or something like that. If that's the case, let the students know. They probably already know, but if they don't, let the students know that they can Bluetooth the images to each other's tabs. And 
all you gotta do is go to settings for Bluetooth and turn turn on that little check uh, checklist for make my device searchable and change their device name into their own name so they can search each other because otherwise the default name for the device is the same for everyone and that sometimes causes chaos so make sure to use all these tech savvy features on the note to on the tablet to your advantage uh, for the prepare section after the students have finished making their slides and promotional materials for the introduction and conclusion part I think it's more time efficient if the teacher brainstorm um, leads a brainstorm discussion as a class so that the students know what to expect or the teacher goes around to the individual groups and helps them quickly finish the introduction and conclusion because otherwise the students will most likely spend too much time worrying about this than needed because they have no idea what to do, what to write, or what the introduction or conclusion is trying to say. So I think that'll be more uh, saving time. And it's also crucial to give them at least 10 minutes before the presentation so that they can practice, rehearse, and divide up what they're going to say amongst themselves. Otherwise, there will be chaos in which they don't know what's going on during the presentation. And the students will appreciate this once they realize the value of rehearsing and practicing before the actual presentation. So, um... That's it for my vlog for this week, and I will see you guys next week.